please welcome to the TEDx Sonoma County stage, Henry Evans. My name is Henry Evans. I am a mute quadriplegic due to a stroke-like attack in 2002. It is an honor to speak at TEDx Sonoma County today from my bed in Los Altos Hills. Let me begin by saying that 2002 was a wonderful year to have a stroke. <laughs> Not that having a stroke was wonderful. It was horrifying. But nonetheless, if you had to go through it, 2002 was a good year. Why would I say that? Well, for two reasons. First, 1990 was the year they passed the Americans with Disabilities Act, which by the time I became wheelchair-bound, ensured that there were ramps and electric doors everywhere. But there is a second, more exciting reason, which leads to the subject of my talk today. The exciting part is that we live in transformational times as regards technologies which level the playing field for disabled people. And since 2015 marks its 25th anniversary, today I will set out three goals regarding electronic accessibility for the Americans with Disabilities Act for the next 25 years. The three goals cover telepresence, environmental control standardization, and information dissemination. The first goal regards telepresence. Like this device I am using right now. It is wonderful. But instead of a long explanation, Let's watch a brief video about how telepresence expands my world. The beam has helped us as a family because when you have a member of your family that has lost everything, movement, speech, so he's literally trapped in his body, the beam is actually taking Henry to places that he could never go to. Once the beam is set up, I can log in and go for a walk anytime I want, with no help from others, even if the beam is physically located on the other side of the world. Call it the democratization of culture. It's the closest I have come to walking in the 11 years since my stroke. The beam has taken Henry from a man that has locked-in syndrome to freeing him to go visit people, interact with people, and what that means is it freed him up mentally from his body. He's doing what he loves. He's, he's living his life. To demonstrate, please join me on a tour of a palace on the other side of the world in South Korea. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> is it okay for you? Perfect. Perfect. Now you are in the center of big city Seoul. And I will show you the very beautiful palace. Well, I feel like talking with you in a yes. very near place. Yes, yeah? I feel like you're standing right here. Can you follow me? Sure. Freely, freely. You can move. Wow, great. You can see all the all these buildings. Okay. Can you see? Yes. I'm from Indonesia. I'm from Indonesia. I'm from Indonesia. We are in Indonesia. Bandung. Spectacular. Yeah. I see. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. 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 life hasn't ended. Your life is beginning, but you have a new life now. And technology has definitely played a part of that. As telepresence becomes more ubiquitous in office buildings around the world, it allows disabled people who can talk to enter the workforce on the same terms as able-bodied people. Since no one can see your disabled body, they don't realize you are disabled, and therefore can't discriminate against you, even subconsciously. Besides the obvious mobility benefit, this is the most important aspect of telepresence. For this reason, my first electronic accessibility goal for the Americans with Disabilities Act for the next 25 years is to ultimately require all public buildings to have telepresence devices so mobility impaired people have equal access to the world. The second goal has to do with standardizing environmental controls. 
Environmental controls are electromechanical devices which allow disabled people to physically interact with their environment, like lights, doors, and window shades. There are three basic types of environmental controls. The first type are the oldest, and consist of devices which have been specifically developed for the disabled community. They are generally simple, use older technology and are expensive because of their limited market. Nonetheless, they are effective for what they do. The second type come from the devices developed for the smart home market, like the Nest thermostat, which can be controlled from a PC. Since this type of device is developed for the mass market, they are less expensive and utilize cutting-edge technology. Let's take a closer look at the third type of environmental control. It is a new class of assistive devices which also take advantage of a 21st century technology, the embedded internet. Since nobody seems clear on exactly what embedded internet means, let me be specific. In recent years it has become possible to buy a fully functioning, palm-sized computer called the Raspberry Pi for about $30. By building it into assistive devices, engineers enable two things. First, an onboard computer allows full coordinated control of all electromechanical aspects of the device, and secondly, it allows the device, via Wi-Fi, to post a control graphical user interface on the internet in the form of a web page. This means anybody with a standard web browser who can operate a cursor, regardless of the method, can wirelessly control the device without the assistance of a caregiver. The first such device is called ScratchBot, and was designed to autonomously scratch facial itches, the bane of quadriplegics everywhere. Imagine if somebody tied their hands behind your back and tickled your face with a feather. It's frequently so bad I jerk around. What you are looking at here are the web pages which are wirelessly generated by the miniature computer in the ScratchBot. The images allow me to control the scratcher without assistance. I just point to the image of the command with my head tracker and then click a simple switch. Here I am wirelessly directing it to my head. It greatly enhances my independence because no caregiver is needed. It feels great. This next device does not look exciting, but in fact is the most useful. I use it dozens of times every day. It was a byproduct of some research being done at Georgia Tech. It also uses an embedded Raspberry Pi to create this web page, and it allows me to independently adjust my hospital bed with head movements when I am uncomfortable, which happens several times an hour. I no longer have to bother my caregiver to constantly adjust my bed. The last device I will show you also has a whimsical use. But pay attention to the switching mechanism. This innovative machine uses the EEG to detect blinking for control of a revolving straw and whiskey pump. Henry is able to sip single malts just by blinking to activate it. Let's watch. Whiskey straw. EEG. There is nothing like the nectar of the gods. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the sad reality is that I am on so many medications that I am not allowed to drink much whiskey. This simple switching system could be used to control anything electrical, adding one more way for the severely disabled to interact with their environment. In order to focus all of these efforts, the Americans with Disabilities Act should standardize environmental controls so hotel, hospital and conference rooms are fully operable by disabled people using smartphones or laptop computers.
The third and final goal for the American Disabilities Act has the biggest potential impact on disabled people's everyday lives. Let me ask you, what do you do when you are trying to figure out how to do something for the first time? You probably do an online search for instructional videos. Well, let me tell you, when you wake up in the ICU with a combination of severe disabilities, you have a lot to learn about dealing with everyday life. Unfortunately, though, standard search engines do not offer much help, because both the description of the nature of the deficits and the specificity of the solutions are far too complex. Fortunately, a group in Maryland is building the Aging and Disability Skills Gateway to help with this. They have pioneered a sophisticated internet search engine which enables the effortless dissemination of best practices for a how to accomplish a specific task given a specific subset of disabilities. Tricks regarding my leg spasms which took me years to master could be learned in a few hours. No single physical therapist is familiar with all of the best practices for a particular combination of deficits, but the worldwide disabled community is. The Americans with Disabilities Act should make the completion of this gateway its third goal in the early part of this century. As we observe the 25th anniversary of the Act, we find ourselves surrounded by exciting new assistive technologies which did not exist when the Act was written. The 21st century has already yielded telepresence, powerful new forms of environmental control and the almost instantaneous dissemination of information. The goals of the Americans with Disabilities Act for the next quarter century need to include electronic accessibility. Please join me in sowing the seeds of these ideas so that as a society we can continue to level the playing field for disabled people. In fact, if you know any software engineers who would like to volunteer their time to our cause, please put them in contact with me. Thank you.